Welcome to the Catamount Football Show with Coach Matt Land. I'm Bill Mayo, and this week we'll take a look back at the River Ridge game and also discuss the upcoming contest with the South Cobb Eagles. Stay right here. We'll be back with more Catamount football in just a minute. You know what makes Carpet Express different from other flooring companies? We care about you. So that you can make the right choice for your home, at Carpet Express we offer carpet, vinyl, wood, laminate, ceramic tile, and luxury vinyl tile. We don't only sell you a product. At Carpet Express we offer quality installation backed by a warranty. We don't stock one or two products. At Carpet Express we stock up to 100 different products in each category at affordable prices. So come to Carpet Express where we care about you. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go be great! Blue. Blue is big. You've got the deep blue sea, the big blue sky, and more people in more countries like blue than any other color. That's big. And in the world of real estate, blue stands for one of the biggest brands. Caldwell Banker. 91,000 agents across 47 countries gives you a super-powered Rolodex and the marketplace muscle of a brand recognized from Indiana to India. So join the blue. Join Caldwell Banker and start doing bigger, better, and bluer things in real estate. All right, Coach Land, three words. Don't call timeout. <laughs> Sum up the game. Well, okay, let's, we will. We'll start the game from the beginning. Okay. First of all, it was a very, very unique game from this standpoint. I've lost a first quarterback before. I don't know that I've ever lost a second quarterback before. Right. So that in and of itself was enough uniqueness for me. I would have been just perfectly content to uh, – uh, Second quarter, Ashton yeah, – or some, Ashton, sometime in the first yeah, quarter. We can't, I think he actually played yeah. a series right. with, uh, with, with the, the, the fractured clavicle. Um, just a real quick injury update. He's out probably four to six weeks, so right. uh, we won't have him. But it was very, very – I was very happy. I thought we had a very good game plan uh, with him. Uh, obviously, this week we were going to begin to throw a little bit more. We, we felt like we had some manageable throws that, that he would be able to throw and be comfortable with. And so at the end of the day, was kind of excited about this game because I thought, okay, we're going to kind of – we had a couple of games to kind of lather him up, and mm -hmm. then we're going to kind of take the reins off of him. And he was ready. I think he was, he was ready prepared and, and knew all his reads and everything. And then suddenly he goes down. And uh, at that point, we had to make some decisions. And one first decision was – uh, to, to find out who was going to get the freshman quarterback <laughs> out of the <laughs> out of the stands. That's because a first. That's a first for me. I've that's not right. Been involved in that one of those before. Yeah, we hadn't done that. So well, thankfully, mm -hmm. we was able to find Warner Ross and and get him out of the stands. And one of our coaches took him over to the field house, got him dressed, and got him back. Uh, so at least we would have a, a backup. Uh, but then at that point, we, we we already had a wildcat package in with with uh, Jameer, which we were going to feature this week. Right. So it kind of timing wise worked out. We were able to get him some some carries from that. Position. Uh, and then we brought over Parker Adams, who is a former quarterback, has played some spot quarterback, and has always been our emergency quarterback. Mm -hmm. We just not planned on it being an emergency this week. Right. So he came over and, and worked, and, and certainly between he and uh, uh, he and Jameer, we were able to get to the end of the game and, and get to the point to where you know, like I said, at the end of the game, uh, you know, walked away with a win. So hats off to our team. That adjusted. I thought our our team did an outstanding job. They understood what was happening, and so they did a great job of of, of adapting. And and really, it, we talk about next man up. You know, next man up is not the next person behind in that position. The next man up is everybody steps up. Right. I mean, everybody steps up. Coaches and players, band cheerleaders, fans. Everybody steps up. Uh, but then certainly uh, thought the coaches did an outstanding job. I mean, we we we. I don't want to say limped. We, we got to halftime, and I know we came in here and had a great coaches meeting, very spirited. Everybody understood what was in play. Uh, I can say the second thing that I've never done before, I've never taken a legal pad out, and you and I were on the sidelines drawing plays right. up. Uh, legal pad, just making sure everybody was, was on the same page and knew what to do because we were literally putting it on the fly because from your standpoint, defensively, 
they were doing some things to us that was really a good game plan. They really were. They were, they were doing a lot of slanting, a lot of moving. They were doing a unique thing. They backed their nose man about two yards off the ball. Trying to, the kid was really quick, trying to give him a chance to run and, and he play was like quick. a linebacker. I mean, he, he was, was able to get very off. Quick. So some, some unique looks from, from the River Ridge defense. They did a nice job of, of game planning and developing a, a, a good – uh, plan for us to attack. Yeah, and us. offensively, we stated last week on the show, they were much, much improved. Had Absolutely. a good size offensive line. They stayed within what they were good at. Uh, even though they were spread, they ran some eye-based plans. So they were running trap, they were running a little powers and things like that. Then we saw the midline. We've not seen the midline right. since Sequoia. Right. It's funny how when a team has success, you're going to see that again. You've got to learn how to shut that down. So anyhow, special teams was very solid for the game. Uh, um, and, and so overall, if we just talked about the game, very proud of the way our coaches coached, very proud of the way our players played, and thought they did an outstanding job getting to the end of the game. Very strange stat line. Talk about that before oh we gosh. talk about the end of the game. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, first of all, we had over 300 yards rushing. Three, like 350. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was significant. 350-something yards rushing. And we had three first downs. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy in and of itself. Uh, so, so, you know, but that was, I mean, you're going to say he had, you know, Jameer had touchdown runs of 83, 64, 53, and 70. And then we had a 55-yard yeah, pass. Yeah, 55-yard yeah. pass for touchdown. So that was very unique in and of right. itself. But I think the, the, the real context that you were alluding to early on is how the game Don't ended. Don't call timeout, right? Don't call timeout. That's exactly right. You know, there, there's a couple of things that was happening in the game, and this is probably as good a time as any to make sure people understand. You know, I, we, we, we're not, you know, thankfully, we're in a position where our offense has scored a lot of points. Not only they scored a lot of points, our defense has played very successful. Mm -hmm. And not only that, we're playing less than 35 plays a game on average, our Th offense. 32 Friday night. 32 Friday night, which if you think about it, the average offense in high school runs 65 plays a game. That's average. A lot of teams that play us are running 75 to 80 plays a game. So when we looked at going into the game, we knew that this was a team that could score very quickly at any time. Well, what happened is late in the game, Certainly, we have the ball, we get the ball, our defense does an outstanding job, turnover on downs, and we certainly thankful for that. We get the ball, and they call timeout three times in a row, force us to kick. So once they force us to kick, then they've got the ball around the 35. They're playing for another score. And, you know, that's kind of the rule. As long as the other team's playing, you can play now. If you see the other team bring their JV in, then, then certainly you reciprocate and do that. But as long as the team's trying to play and they're trying to score and they're trying to win, it gives you an opportunity to get your guys on the field and get them some work. But where I think the real disappointment came in this is that when we got the turnover, great job by our defense, we were forced with the fact that we're now on our third string quarterback who does not know how to run the victory play. Now you can say, well, he should have just catched the ball and get a knee. Well, it's just not that simple. There's a lot of things that come into play with that. So the first thing is, is we really had not ran that with our third string quarterback. Second of all, I think to your point, we're still in the game. At this point, they're trying to win, and out of respect to them, and you know, they're, they're doing their best. Our guys are doing their best. You would expect that. But the part that everybody, I think, misses is that number, probably the, the biggest thing for me, is throughout this game, for the third week in a row, our knees have been chopped with our offensive linemen. It's already cost us Osbaldo for two weeks, possibly three weeks coming up this next week. I've sent tapes to the state. We've shown it time and time again, and teams continue to do it. And officials association and, will even say it's wrong. And explain what it, our primary play is, has been the buck sweep. Both guards pull, and you see it all the time. Our guys come outside. When they come outside that box, the the – Outside linebackers or the corners are coming up and hitting them in the knees and chopping them, and that's against the rules. It is against the rules. It, you can't dirty, do that. It's dirty, and it's against the rules. That is, it is against the rules. And, and so, they did it to us several times. That's right. So Friday. knowing that they were still trying to, you know, to, to get a score, right. I knew that what would happen when they snapped that ball or when we snapped the ball in victory formation, we were going to get those guys submarining at our knees again. And I just thought the best thing to first of all protect our players was to run a play. And second of all, was to get the ball outside so that it would not be inside where all of that activity was going on. What was funny was we ran the same play that we had just ran three straight times. I would have thought they could have stopped that. That was my, maybe my assumption. Right. But to the point you made, it's our job to call plays. It's our player's job to execute yeah. the plays. And it's the other team's job to execute the plays that they called. I'm thankful our guys executed their plays exactly the way we coached them to play. 
If it was uncomfortable, I apologize for it. Certainly apologize to any fans that might think that we're running the score up. It wasn't. It was something that we did in order, first of all, to protect our team. But more importantly, we didn't have that play in with this quarterback, and so we had to run a play. And the truth is, the other team, you know, had the same chance we had. So, anyhow, it, it, it is what it is. We flush it. We move on. And now, we, but once again, great week by our players. Love the attitude, the effort, uh, facing adversity that our players did. And I love the way our coaches coached. And at the end of the day, now we're getting ready for the South Cobb Eagles. All right. Let's take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of Transformers Transmission Complete All Repair Specialist and we are excited. It is football season. Another thing that we're excited about is our new facility opening here at 844 Sugar Road in Dalton, Georgia. Our other location at 815 East Walnut Avenue is still open to help continue your car service. So just give us a call at 706-529-2706 and from the Transformers family, God, God bless, bless and, and have, have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. With VidLink, OptiLink's exciting new entertainment platform, you'll have the freedom to stream VidLink content on multiple devices, even when away from home. Plus, with VidLink, you can access the widest array of content on the market. You'll get great features like Restart, Replay, Cloud-based DVR storage, all HD programming, and so much more. Contact us today to see how you can get linked to the next big thing in video entertainment. Buy from the pros who know at Performance Sports Academy. Our pro shop has one of the largest selections of bats, gloves, and cleats in the North Georgia area. Featuring Rawlings, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, DeMarini, Mizuno, and the largest New Balance cleat dealer in the area. We provide baseball and softball gear for travel leagues, rec leagues, middle school, and high school programs. Get your baseball and softball training, equipment, and uniforms from the former collegiate and professional players who know at Performance Sports Academy. ProformanceSportsAcademy.com Ford of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership, offers our exclusive 10-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty and our $1,000 low-price guarantee. Ford of Dalton, I-75, exit 336, or FordofDalton.com. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. At Engineered Floors, we make sure better is in every detail. Technology has always been the foundation of Engineered Floors, pushing past what we believed was possible. Rather than having several buildings for each part of our manufacturing process, we put everything under one roof, from beginning to end, which means easier production, faster turnarounds, and better work environments. When it comes to the environment, we've taken extra care to leave a smaller footprint, especially as we grow. Stain resistant, pet friendly, durable, beautiful, guaranteed. We create our flooring with our customers and their daily needs in mind. We are invested in this community and the economy that has been created by the industry we love. And after all of this, we still know that we can do more. As long as our customers need us, we'll continue to fearlessly pursue better. Ford of Dalton, your hometown Ford dealership, offers our exclusive 10-year, 150,000-mile limited warranty and our $1,000 low-price guarantee. Ford of Dalton, I-75, exit 336 or FordofDalton.com. Welcome back to the Catamount Football Show, and we continue with our coaches' interview segment. Coach Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, jump right in with the uh, uh, freshman football team and tell us what's going on with those guys and, and about your staff and how the season's been so far. Sure, this is a, this is a great group of kids. We, uh, uh, this is my second year doing this, and uh, really coming in, we, uh, we thought this group uh, was, we had a lot of skill guys last year, but uh, uh, 
the, this group of linemen that we have, we've got uh, of the 44 kids that, that started the season with us, 24 of them are linemen. It's a great thing. You can so, never uh, have too many no, linemen. It's, uh, and we run through some depth no. with them. You know, they get a little banged up here and no. there. And with these guys, it's just the next guy up. So, uh, you know, we're 2-2 uh, two and two right now. Uh, we've uh, um, lost to uh, McCauley and Cass at the beginning of the season and then had a great game. Uh, against Northwest mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and um, that was just a uh, uh, just a great football game to be a part of, and and uh, you know it was, ended up being 30 to 25 as the final score. So it was back and forth a little bit, and had a great time just coaching that game with the kids, and and then uh, the Ottawa Owls came down last week, and, and uh, interesting schedule. Down. I mean, we we kind of reach out and we we encompass a lot of area right with the teams that we play uh yeah we really do it's uh uh you know we like to think uh, you know we'll play anybody uh you know we right. want to play the best competitors that we can play I and mean, you know the philosophy of uh you know you don't get better uh by uh playing against your brother-in-law so that's right it's uh, you just reach out play the best teams we can so talk a little bit about the philosophy of the freshman program you came up this is like you said this is your second year doing that and, and coach land made a decision you know, wanted to commit some more resources to that program, put some more emphasis on it. So tell us about what you guys are doing, your staff, and, and kind of the, the program that you work with these young guys. Sure. You know, first of all, hats off to, to Coach Land because, you know, the, the teams that we play, uh, you know, we've lost some games this year. But generally you can tell, uh, you know, freshmen get lost in a lot mm -hmm. of programs right. and, uh, you know, end up standing around a lot because, you know, might not be good enough to be on scout team, you know, and, uh, we get kids that, and, and you lose them from the program sometimes. Sure, that, we right? do. Yeah, yeah, they they can disappear, yeah. and you know, uh, year after year. And so this is just a uh, a great way. You know, we've got four coaches on staff, and and just being able to to, uh, to for the kids to have uh, an adult on the field that they right. can check in with every day, uh, as opposed to a position coach that they might or might not see if they're doing mm -hmm. scout team. They might not not see them if they're working with the varsity and JV. So just to have us to to be able to check in with them every day is really a good thing. For for the kids and I think it helps give them a class identity right they, they're still they're, they're that freshman class and, and they're working together and they're playing for an objective sure yeah it, you know and it starts out like that but the, and and it, this group is a really tight-knit group too they uh, um, like I said I spent a lot of the time with the linemen uh, you know as the OL coach but they uh, uh, they they really love each other, and so that that is big, and and uh, you know some of the guys are good enough to play up to to JV and even varsity uh, this year, which is very doesn't happen very often, and and uh, these guys are their biggest fans when that when they're able to do that. It's really neat to see that. Absolutely. So you're at the middle school for what, 10, 12, 15 sure, this years, is have, whatever time, whatever length of time it was. Talk about transitioning from. The middle school program, because you did a great job running and managing that, to the high school program. What have you seen as far as difference? Sure, it's uh, uh, it was. Uh, I guess it's more time involved with being with varsity with mm -hmm. the high school program. Uh, the uh, uh, coach Land really has. You know, whereas at the middle school, I had to make a lot of those decisions, and you know, with not playing in a, a league or a right. conference, we had to make a lot of decisions every year that 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 uh, we shouldn't have had to made, you know. And, and uh, so we've been with the varsity now with the high school guys, a lot of that falls on Coach Land. So it allows me and the rest of the guys on the staff just to be able to work with the kids and, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to, to enjoy being on the field and work in practice. And a lot of the administrative stuff I don't have to deal with anymore. Tell us so. about your, the rest of your staff, who, who, who's working with so you. So we've got uh, James Johnson. He's been on staff now for, oh gosh, uh, four or five years, I mm -hmm. think. Um, he's our defensive coordinator and does a great job. Um, he handles a lot of the uh, uh, you know, special teams and right. conditioning for us. And uh, he's kind of hardcore, so it's, uh, he enjoys that. Uh, uh, you know, Chase Pritchett is another guy. He's a teacher of the high school and on staff with us. Uh, you know, he played football in Murray County mm -hmm. and went on to App State and played with them. So uh, he does a great job with our defense also. And the kids really love him. They see him a lot right. during the day. And a lot of the kids have him in class. So uh, it's, uh, it's fun to see. Uh, um, you know, we have uh, Bo Blackwood, a uh, former player, right. uh, and, uh, which is neat because his little brother uh, is uh, on the freshman team this year. And uh, Gabe Major Kurth is a college student that is helping us out. Mm -hmm. and, um, he's, a, uh, he's a ball of energy. Uh, he's, uh, loves you know, football. Loves football, loves yeah. uh, the quarterback position, and uh, loves working with us. And he does a great job. Loves the Catamounts now. So. now. You're still teaching at the middle school. 
got some new administration over there. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, we have, uh, uh, yeah, we've had a, a couple of changes this year. We have, uh, you know, assistant principals are moving around, and mm -hmm. our um, our principal, uh, Laura Johnson, does a phenomenal job. She's a great uh, principal, great uh, administrator, and new to our system uh, this year. Brand new to the system yep. from. Uh, 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 from down around Atlanta and okay. just loves the kids and loves the teachers in the building. This is her first time in a middle school setting and um, she's doing an awesome job and she's wonderful to work for. Now i got to ask you another question. You, you, see, you see this program from a lot of different angles but now you're getting to experience it from a, another angle as a parent. So That's correct. So Charlie, your son's a sophomore offensive lineman. So talk, talk about that just as, as kind of that angle of, of looking at things as sure. a parent. It's definitely something that that I try to be aware of. Uh, you know, I, I want to, just like any parent, I want to fight for my kids and make right. sure they're getting the best of, of what they uh, can, uh, you know, what what's out there. But um, keeping that in check with uh, the rest of the guys on the football team as well, you know, sure. so it's uh, that's something I you'll try find to be you'll, aware You'll of. probably be harder, well, you know this from coaching him, you'll be harder on him than you would be on, on sure. anybody else. Sure, and I try not to do that. I right. try to, because, you know, he's got to come home with me. That's right. Day, That's so. right. So, and you have some other duties with the team. You work with the offensive line. Uh, talk about what you do on Friday night, too. Sure. I um, I get the privilege to be up in the box. I don't have to deal with the, the weather, the, right. the, whether it's the heat or the rain that you guys deal with on the sideline. But uh, just, uh, you know, I chart the plays for the offense and uh, just try to come up with tendencies uh, yep. um, from the box, working with the other guys in the box, Cole and, and Doug. And so I enjoy that, yep. too. And after, after y'all season ends, you come work with us with the offensive line. Yeah. So it's always good to have another set of eyes. Absolutely. Yeah, being a third O-line coach right. over Be there. Before we wrap up, update us on the rest of your family. What's going on with them? Uh, Katie is a sophomore at Kennesaw State uh, studying dance and uh, with a minor in business that was she wants to open up a dance school. Absolutely. So that was important for me. Uh, Melanie is going to or I guess I. Uh, maybe 16, 17th year wow. at Dalton High School as a video education teacher, career tech teacher, and uh, yearbook. And if you director. need a yearbook? That's she, right. If you need a yearbook, she's the one to contact, she's right? down at the bottom of the ramp. All right. Well, thanks so much for everything you do and appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. So right here, we'll be back with more Catamount Football in just a minute. Why should you make the switch to First Bank of Dalton? My bank gives back to our community. My bank understands our changing needs. My bank made my dream home my home. My bank has the tools I need to manage my business. My bank helps me save. My bank make decisions locally. Need more reasons? Stop by and see why First Bank of Dalton should be your bank for life. Big things are happening at Hamilton. Anna Shaw Children's Institute, People's Cancer Institute, new physician practices near you, and Hamilton Medical Center is number one for overall hospital care. Hamilton Healthcare System, health for life. Are you tired of driving to Chattanooga to have a great dinner? Look no further than Walnut Hill Farm right here in Whitfield County. We are now serving dinner on Thursday and Friday nights. Our team of Matt Barrett and Jason Joseph have put together what we believe is the finest menu in Whitfield County. With a wine selection of over 50 bottles and 50 miles of mountain range in the background, this will be your go-to for romantic dinners and dinner with friends. We look forward to seeing you out here, five o'clock on Thursday and Friday nights. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal, each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go Big Red! You know what makes Carpet Express different from other flooring companies? We care about you so that you can make the right choice for your home at Carpet Express, we offer carpet, vinyl, wood, laminate, ceramic tile, and luxury vinyl tile. We don't only sell you a product. At Carpet Express, we offer quality installation backed by a warranty. We don't stock one or two products. At Carpet Express, we stock up to 100 different products in each category at affordable prices. So come to Carpet Express, where we care about you. Oh, who's this old guy? Oh, uh, that's Cooper. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs. But one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Oh. Sweetheart, what about this puppy? Honey puppies. Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. 
The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. It was a nice night, but hopefully that was our last night of 85, 90 degree plus wet Boy, that's weather, a right? Trend, man, I'm telling you what. <clears throat> it's been a long, uh, hot season of that. Yep. So I thought it was interesting. River Ridge uh, won the toss and they elected to receive. That's right. And so we like it. Um, yep. That means it gets theirs out of the way. They come in here and right off the bat, they move the ball. Uh, you know, our defense, like a lot of defenses, you don't cut a lot of stuff early on. You kind of want to see what they're doing. Uh, right here, good hit by Gabe Hill. Good to have Gabe back, boy. He <coughs> sure really responded is. from his elbow. Got he hurt in the ring old game, so it's really good to have him that's back. That's right. Responded <coughs> with a big play right there. Another good job right there. Big hit by him, Mauricio Quintero and uh, Lane Cox. Lane had another solid game. Love the way our D-line played as well. Good pursuit right here by Caleb Hernandez. Does a good job of being physical at the point of attack and tackling. You, you really like to see that good pursuit. John Ross forces the pitch, and then, of course, right there, it's perfect. It's the way, the way our defensive coaches work on it, at pursuit drill, and making sure everybody's in the right place, right time. Good job right here on our punt coverage team, I mean, our punt return team, just getting what we can. Uh, Luke Blanchard, one of our freshmen right there, playing for us, so he's had to kind of step in with all the injuries. So here we come, back on offense. Uh, we've got buck sweep, and just a great job by Jameer here, uh, getting picking up about eight or nine yards. <clears throat> But, but we kind of we stall out on the first few possessions and end up having to kick it back. Another good job right there. You see our D line playing tough. Christian Lama played very physical this week. I love the way he played. He thought I thought he set a great tempo. You see Ryan Larue right there taking up a double team, and then you see right here coming up and Parker Adams. You know that's the that's the thing about um, you know when you. When you get someone hurt like Ashton, it actually hurts you in two positions because it hurts you got to get another quarterback in there, and then the other side of that, you got to also bring somebody out of another starting place. Once again, you see right here Parker making another great tackle. So it's one of those things that, that boy, injuries hurt you at this level and at this time as yep. well because you don't really have time to get anybody ready. Great job right there once again. Gabe squaring him up. Parker Good Adams. Good form tackle. Down. Absolutely. That's Head as good up, as it gets. <clears throat> shooting his arms around him. Absolutely. Good pursuit right here by Brock Johnson. Get the ball outside there. Mauricio Quintero on the coverage. So we come back and, and we run the buck sweep back the other direction. We had picked up something that they were doing. They were really slanting their front hard. Uh, so we came back and, and we knew which way they were going to slant and ran back against it. And that's the result right here. You'll see, uh, we don't have a replay. But <laughs> the, trust had, us. we trust had two, us two, two good blocks right there, by the, particularly by the pulling guards. Good job right there. Ty, Ty Swope comes in there. Coy Gray, uh, once again, Christian Lama. You see those guys right there squeezing and pinching that line. Great job by, by Gabe. You know, Gabe's quick as a cat, and it's so good to see him the way he plays. Uh, plays with a tremendous tenacity and, and, and really, really fast. It's good to have him. You'll see it again right here. He reads and reacts. They tried to run that little quarterback midline, and, of course, mm -hmm. it flushed him outside. Great job by John Ross right there, closing down and f filling that fence up. Come back on offense. Now we're in. Now this at this is, point, we've lost. That's right. Ashton's, Ashton's out. And so we come back with our Wildcat package. And, and we had this in. We were actually going right. to run it this week. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was something we just hadn't had a chance to, to do it yet. Right here, uh, Brady Penley hit him in the worst place, right in the hands. But that's all right. Brady really stepped up when Parker, Parker, great job by Ty Swope right there. When we brought Parker over, Brady really had to step up and play, and he did. And Tyson Swope right there. Tyson gets just hammered so much in double teams and taking it up for the linebackers so they can make plays. Uh, it's good to see Tyson when he's able, they're, they're able to get a next stunt on or a win stunt, something like that, get him an opportunity to get in there and make a play. Great job right here. You see a bullet come yep, in right there. Sure That's does. Gabe Hill once again. I love how he tackles with his head up. Absolutely. And that's great uh, fundamentals Absolutely. by our coach, defensive coaches and by Gabe right here. They work hard on that. They def our defense, up. that's Boom. right. Our defense tackles every single day. Uh, we don't take any days off, and it really shows when you see good tackles like that, good form for tackles. So we force him a punt. Come back with the ball. And there's Maurice running hard on a jet sweep. Does a nice job getting downfield. Good blocking by the receivers. 
See here, Manny getting a good. You see Jameer on the end. Great yep. tackle, right, man? People don't understand. That's the great thing about Jameer. He's going to do his job. Absolutely, he blocks as hard as he. Great job right there by J.J. Robledo, our punter. Well, we had a high snap right there, and uh, um, great job of him coming in there and uh, and, uh, and and making that play right there. Caleb Hernandez does a great job of getting his hand in there and forcing right there, and an errant uh, handoff causes them to lose quite a bit of yardage. Come back, you see Ty Swope right there. Great job taking up. And, of course, Christian Lama, as I said, very, very physical, very physical. Great job right there holding the line and, uh, and, and not letting those guys get through there. And then right here, great pressure off the edge and a little hole in there, but that's all right, a little pedestrian. And then big hit right there. And once again, Mauricio bringing it along with Brady Penley right there. Love it. Love to see that energy. Love to see those guys run into the ball. So we're getting down to the end of the first half. Good block by Brant Bagley right there. Good run by Jameer. Jamie Penny with a little athleticism. Absolutely. Not to get wiped out. <laughs> and just like we drew. Coach Long, we're working <laughs> with him on the sidelines <laughs> on his deep ball right there. And threw it, threw steps it. Threw it to the back shoulder, through right. front shoulder, inside <laughs> front three yards. Inside. That's where exactly where he throws the fade. <laughs> I love it. I love to see the energy of these guys. You can have. see the play action right there just brings everybody from everywhere. Well, and then we're going to have to do this. Teams are going <coughs> to load up from this point on. Parker's right. going to be quarterback. Everybody knows they're going to be in there. And Parker can throw it. It's, you know, I mean, once again, he's not thrown any balls this week. That's right. Uh, and so uh, to come in and throw one pass for 55 yards and a score, it's pretty good. Kareem so, on the catch. So that's, that's a right. good thing. There's the end of the first half. So we go in 14 to nothing. Still pretty much anybody's ball game at this point. Absolutely. Home is a place where all are welcome. It's where the story begins. It's not a place, it's a feeling. Home is where the heart is. At Furniture of Dalton, we handpick each of our 150 brands so that you can find your perfect heart's desire. Come see what you've been missing at Carpets of Dalton and Furniture of Dalton, the destination that brings you home. Exit 328 off I-75. Hi, I'm Dr. Reginald Sherrill. Are you tired of sweaty underarms and dealing with deodorant stains on your clothes? We're performing a procedure called Mirror Dry. It's safe, non-invasive, sweat and odor free, deodorant free. It is clinically proven and FDA approved. I've had the procedure and it really works. The procedure takes about one hour, it's local anesthesia and works immediately. Call our office, Dalton Plastic Surgery, 706-226-3311. 706-226-3311. Oh, onside kick. Ah. So this week we move a baseball player up there after last week. And it's kind of yeah. like, Dad, gum it. You know, we got to get somebody up there to do that. And and behold. Our whole side on the saying, Watch out for the onside kick. Yeah, Watch that's out for right. the onside kick. We should be ready. Have, be ready. We should have told them. That's yeah. what would have helped, right? So we get them in three and out real quick. Good job, our defense. And then right here, we, we obviously had time to do a little bit inside and talk about what they were doing. And once again, a great job right here. All right, working on some things and. Just a different way to run this play, coming back against the flow and giving Jameer a chance to get away from, from all the uh, slanting. And That's that run faster you worked on with him. Takes advantage right? of Coach Martinez. <laughs> Races Jameer every day in practice. For See Brant yards. coming around, making a nice block Great right job, there. Edre yeah. Garcia good, on a good Good block out by Kareem outside. Yep, Kareem doing a good job. You know, Jameer does, does such a good job with his vision, being able to see down the line, see Absolutely. what's in front of him. Once again, J.J. Robledo, I'm sorry, Pepe Lara comes in and kicks our extra points for us. Does a great job right there. You see Ryan Lara, good job right there holding the gap. And then big, big hit there out of Gabe. He, he sees again. that open door. 22 had right a big here. game. Yep, you'll see it right here. Boom. I mean, when he hits, he hits. Great job by Tyson Swope right in there. Once again, those guys, those guys in the in the trenches, they're battling. Good job right here of Lane Cox and and Brady Penley, like I mentioned earlier. Brady did a great job of stepping up this game. We really needed him to pick it up this week. And you see right there, a great job of him coming up, evading the block and making that tackle along with Lane. And a recruiting session gave one of those guys that Shorter's been absolutely. To him. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's been offered by Shorter. I, I'm, I'm great job right here. They run the little Philly special. 
uh, and uh, a great That's job. A really of good, play call. It's good play great, call. Good play call. Absolutely, it's a great play call. Oh. And right here, it's, it's hard to tell if he hits him on the hip or what. But, but that was a touchdown. But this is it was a touchdown. But, this, had it blocked up but I want to tell you, great, great job right here by our defense. Turned it back in, but our backside support gets cut off. Real quick point on that. A lot. Another thing is when we talked about earlier about why we don't like to. Uh, uh, good job right here, A.J. Hernandez going up and catching. But another reason we don't like to get up under center, particularly on the victory play, is we're, we're not under center. Right. And if you're under center, you might feel comfortable with it. Here we come again. This is another adjustment <clears throat> that we made to some things they were doing defensively, and, and Jameer capitalized on it for a touchdown. Good job by the guys executing the blocks and – See Great right kick, there. but now that's the that's the that's block we're right talking there. about. You get if you if you're DVR in this, go back and look at it. Watch they what they hit, do to Brent. They go what they see to Brent. They come yeah. in and they go down low on his knees, and that right there is against it's against the rules. You can't do that. It's been going on for now. You can three initiate weeks. the contact in the stomach area and the waist area and go down, but those guys are clearly coming in in their knees to try to eliminate those guys pulling. That's right. So great job right here by our defense. Brock Johnson coming off the side. Another good job by Tyson Swope. They do move the ball on this drive and get the ball down right there, and then we get great pressure right here out of again. Gabe. And there he is again. Gabe's really, really picked his game up this year. He's, he's played hard, played fast, and that's the kind of stuff we need. Good coverage backside right there by Caleb Hernandez. Love Brock being right there as well. So great job by those guys. So we're in fourth down right here, and, and – uh, you see right here, it's a good, good job right here by our defense, but we got to knock that ball down. We don't want to, if you can't catch it, knock it down. Knock it down. Come back and run trap right there and pick up three or four yards. Good hard running by Marine. That's right. They call timeout. Yep, here's the. They've, they've called three timeouts, burned their timeouts, and at that point, so now we're into this part of the game, that last part, they come back right here and you see they try to run a double play. Good job right there by A.J. Hernandez. Love it. Good play. Good play. Move the ball down the field right here. Good job once again. Our defense playing strong. Playing really, 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 really strong. Backside. Good pursuit. Good pursuit, absolutely. They do a great job right there. Come back and try to run just a little... Throw back here and gets our hand. Great job of Caleb Hernandez getting his hands up right there. And that's great. So right here, you see what happens. Now we have an errant snap. So first down, they call timeout. Second down, they call timeout. And then third down, they call timeout. Trying to get right here, they put nine on the line and try to block the punt. So once again, they're in the game. So now we give the ball back to them at the 41. We get great pressure right here, flush him out of the pocket. And right there, good job by Tyson Swope. Coming in there and making a play. Love it. Good job pursuing. Uh, and those guys getting in there and getting it back. You can see it right here. Tyler Tyson does a great job. Keeps us contained. Stays relentless in his pursuit, which is what we talk about. Love to see those bodies flying in there. We come out with the ball. And mm -hmm. as you can tell right there, we run the same play we ran yep. outside of that errant snap. And um, there he goes. they wholesale put everybody in the middle and tried to get the ball. And that's yeah. where the ball wasn't. So. That's right. And that started the festivities. Good <laughs> That's right. job by Idre again and Brant right there. Got to get his hands inside. I'd say, job. was that a hug or yeah, a hold? His what hands would you call inside that? Right there. <laughs> Don't do that, Brant. Great job right there. Good lateral acceleration by him getting down the field right there. Great job. And now we're exchanging uh, we're getting Christmas card, Christmas card addresses. <laughs> that coach was trying to say, tell him no. he was number one. Yeah, exactly. He, he said, you're number one? That's right. Well, and then the point is, we, we, you know, right there, we wanted to kick the field goal, let, it, let Esteban kick the field goal, um, and then uh, probably enough said there. Absolutely. I think that shows, the, that shows the situation. But great job by our guys. Very proud of their class. Very, very proud of their integrity. Very proud of their discipline, staying on the sidelines when clearly being taunted to come out there, and I was very proud of those guys. Very proud of our coaches of keeping our guys on the sideline. Our fans did a good job, too. Absolutely. I, th I thought our fans Supporting our guys. That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Why should you make the switch to First Bank of Dalton? My bank gives back to our community. My bank understands our changing needs. My bank made my dream home my home. My bank has the tools I need to manage my business. My bank helps me save. 
My bank made decisions locally. Need more reasons? Stop by and see why First Bank of Dalton should be your bank for life. Big things are happening at Hamilton. Anna Shaw Children's Institute, People's Cancer Institute, new physician practices near you, and Hamilton Medical Center is number one for overall hospital care. Hamilton Healthcare System, health for life. Are you tired of driving to Chattanooga to have a great dinner? Look no further than Walnut Hill Farm right here in Whitfield County. We are now serving dinner on Thursday and Friday nights. Our team of Matt Barrett and Jason Joseph have put together what we believe is the finest menu in Whitfield County. With a wine selection of over 50 bottles and 50 miles of mountain range in the background, this will be your go-to for romantic dinners and dinner with friends. We look forward to seeing you out here, five o'clock on Thursday and Friday nights. All right, Coach, let's talk a little bit about the South Cobb Eagles. A uh, very dangerous team. I'm going to tell you, that if there's <clears> one <throat> team to me that defines playing in 6A, it's this team. Certainly it's a team that has struggled year after year. You, you, they First of all, um, you, you look at them and you see a very, very athletically gifted team. I mean, they're yep. going to get off the bus and they're going to look like a bunch of homecoming queens. I mean, they are – pretty guys. I mean, they are athletic, they're big, they're fast, they're strong, and the film represents that when you watch it. So that, that's the first thing, is they're a very big and physically athletic team. Now, when I talk about their offense, they've got playmakers. And even though this is a team that may or could or should or did last year, I mean, you, you know, finish the season four and six or whatever, this is a team that has probably anywhere from five to nine players that can beat you at any given moment. Because they can, go the, they can go the distance. I mean, they're running four fours and four fives, and I mean, they are fast. So it's like a track meet. Well, we went into the fourth quarter last year. It was, it was it's a ball a game. game. I mean, it was a one touchdown yes. game, I believe, yes. going into the fourth quarter. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, to talk about them offensively, they've got tons of playmakers at every position. They've probably got five or six re legitimate receivers that are difficult. They've got a good size offensive line. Quarterback does a good job of getting the ball. He's dangerous in his own right, but he does a good job of spreading it out. So we're going to really defensively have to be on our toes when we play them. That's going to be probably one part of our game that we'll have to have extra care and attention this week, being sure we contain those guys because when they get on the sides, it's like a track meet. What about the defense? Defensively, they, they present a, a, a different challenge for us. Uh, we're going into game seven, and we've only seen one other four-man front team. So these guys are a four-man front. Uh, so it just it changes all of our blocking schemes. And, and they're four-man front because they got four good athletes. Yeah, they got four. four <laughs> it's not like that everybody yeah, runs a three yeah, because yeah. they only got three. Yeah, they got four. They got four good guys. And you'll see a kind of a unique formation out of them. Their defensive ends will stand up. Uh, a lot of times those four-man fronts, the defensive ends are down they the like ground. These guys good. are standing up. Uh, and they really like to get after the passer. Uh, a couple of big guys in the middle. So it, it's going to be a challenge for us, and we'll spend the week working on adjusting our blocking schemes to that. Also expect some blitzing. They, uh, they like to, like to bring, the, bring the heat to us. And without um, Ashton and Landon now, yeah. they'll know that we're on our third quarterback. So I expect you'll see probably eight or nine plus the head cheerleader and the band director <laughs> will be in the box. You know, Concession here. That's right, everybody, wait, yeah. waiting to get yeah. after Jameer. Yeah, special teams wise, uh, they're, they're, they're sound. They're, they're not great. Uh, they're sound. They're going to they're gonna get a good kickoff down to, you know, the five-yard line, somewhere in that range. Punt's going to be about 30 yards, but he gets good height on it, good snapper, good holder. So at the end of the day, they're very sound. We're going to have to beat them in at least two or three of the phases of the game. And truthfully, to win the, you know, we need to win all three phases of this game because they're that dangerous. You know, it, just a little note about it's kind of interesting. Most of the schools that we play, especially those Cherokee County schools, are all newer schools. Oh, yeah. This South Cobb, we were down there last year. <laughs> Yeah, they last had year. they had like a 50th or That's 60th right. class reunion there. It was kind of interesting to see those those folks, you know, it's coming a back to that school. Look. Yeah, it was a, a different, different look, but, look. But they were back supporting their alma mater, yeah, yeah. so yeah. so they they have a long history there. Well, South and Cobb County. County's doing a good job of yeah. pouring money into some of those schools like Osborne and South mm -hmm. Cobb that have not had maybe some of the frontline stuff since they've been building all these new schools, and they're getting new fields, they're getting new gyms, they're getting new academic centers, they're getting new STEM centers. So a lot of those areas are really really growing, and they're attracting a lot of students, and I think ultimately that's what they want to do. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back with more Catamount football after these messages.
Hi, my name is Charles R. Hicks Sr. I'm the owner of Transformers Transmission Complete All Repair Specialist and we are excited. It is football season. Another thing that we're excited about is our new facility opening here at 844 Sugar Road in Dalton, Georgia. Our other location at 815 East Walnut Avenue is still open to help continue your car service. So just give us a call at 706-529-2706 and from the Transformers family, God, God bless, bless and have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. With VidLink, OptiLink's exciting new entertainment platform, you'll have the freedom to stream VidLink content on multiple devices, even when away from home. Plus, with VidLink, you can access the widest array of content on the market. You'll get great features like Restart, Replay, Cloud-based DVR storage, all HD programming, and so much more. Contact us today to see how you can get linked to the next big thing in video entertainment. Buy from the pros who know at Proformance Sports Academy. Our pro shop has one of the largest selections of bats, gloves, and cleats in the North Georgia area. Featuring Rawlings, Wilson, Louisville Slugger, DeMarini, Mizuno, and the largest New Balance cleat dealer in the area. We provide baseball and softball gear for travel leagues, rec leagues, middle school, and high school programs. Get your baseball and softball training, equipment, and uniforms from the former collegiate and professional players who know at Proformance Sports Academy. ProformanceSportsAcademy.com All right, Coach, we're back to wrap up the show, but got a little bit of time here. Let's talk a, a little bit about a subject that I think a lot of people are interested in, uh, the, kind of the recruiting process. And, and you've got guys like, like Jameer who are going to be Division One right. Power Five guys, and then you've got some of the um, 1AA guys and then the NAI schools. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about those processes and, sure. and what a parent can expect and, and, mm -hmm. what, and the, what the kids can expect. Well, the, the great thing about it is, is, is recruiting now has become such a large industry. Uh, and if you think really uh, back not too far, uh, even five years ago, I mean, I, I can even, th I can go <coughs> 10 years ago, let's mm -hmm. say when Watson Dancer was here. Um, it, was, it was really beginning to pick the steam up, but to where it's gotten now, I don't know that anyone would have recognized it. Um, because now it has become truly an industry industry and you know I, I think about about last week you and I were down there and we're talking to Rusty Manziel at Harrison mm -hmm. and I mean he's, he's he makes all his like, living that's, that's his, his, that's his yeah. job and he makes a good living now. Yeah. it's not like he is right. out working out of his, right. his you know his, his garage right trying to, so the, the first thing is is to understand it is a business and it is an industry and and if you as a parent you don't see it that way you're, you're a little naive to maybe some of the things that are out there. Number two is the one thing that I think about is, is the accessibility now that social media has given every coach in the country to these players. You see them promoting themselves. You see recruiting services promoting these players. You see coaches like us promoting these kids. Absolutely. You, you, see, you see schools promoting, whatever it might be. Uh, you even see the colleges promoting their own kids. Well, and it's so easy. It's so, I don't want, to, but it's so easy to do. You can take our all of our game film is put on Huddle. Brandon film Brandon Brown films it for us. It's on Huddle. That's right. You can make a five minute video clip and send it to Absolutely. Tennessee Tech. You can send it to Ohio State. You That's can right. send it to uh, Barry College. It right. doesn't matter the level. All those coaches has access That's to right. it, so they can see your player quickly. That's right. Now. That's a great point because I want to make this point, and that is people say, oh, well, it doesn't matter then where you play at school anymore. It doesn't matter if you start. It doesn't matter if you do anything it, because now you can be that. Every coach can send film off. You can send your own film off. And what I would say to that is there was about uh, a 14-month window that that was probably true because now everybody is – sending that. Right. So now coaches have gotten to the point. In fact, I had a, this week had a, a coach from Ole Miss, coach from, uh, from Alabama talking with me, and one of the, th the things that we talked about, they are so inundated with the film, the amount of film that they get. First of all, they have staffs that are sifting through. I mean, you can send it their email, they're not going to see it. It's, it's going to come through a staff member. Right. So I asked him, I said, so well, still, so what, what, tell me, what, you know, how do you get your kids? He said, coach, it still comes back to me as a college coach coming on your campus 
and talking to you. He said, we're never going to get around that. They can come up with a thousand different ways to attract, uh, to promote, to connect. He said, we're never going to get away from the fact that we're going to come in as a college staff, sit down with you. Number one, we're going to get a transcript. Mom and dad, you need to hear this. They're going to get a transcript. They're going to talk to a counselor. They're going to know what kind of student they are. They can be the greatest in the world. If they don't have the grades, they're not taking their test scores. Another segue, take test scores, sophomore year, junior year. Don't wait till your senior year to take it. But then they're going to get that transcript, and if that's a kid they can recruit, they're going to come and sit in my office. They're going to come sit in our coach's office. They're going to have conversations with you, the position coach, me, the head coach, and they're going to find out because they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of investment in these young men, and they're not going to just do it flippantly. They're going to know, and, and I, so I would kind of use that to go back to the social media deal. It's great to have that kind of accessibility and the ability to promote. Bad things, parents and kids, they're going to see everything. Right. So that crap, sorry, that stuff you put up there from Friday night that you shouldn't have been doing or whatever, these coaches are going to see that and they're going to connect to that. And when they see that, and you see the writings I bring in and post on our wall, you, see, you talk to the same coach. Yeah. There's, there's more kids that are eliminated from the recruiting process because of social media than are gained by social media. I think another factor too, and, and we talk about this quite often, is the level of, the, the level of competition that a kid's playing the school has a big factor in whether they oh, recruit them or not. absolutely. Listen, the ability <clears throat> to, I mean, for an example, we go to Harrison. We're number six, they're number four. You've got an opportunity to really go out and, and not only play, but you've got an opportunity to present. I want right. that's a very, you know, that's one thing to go play, but it's also an opportunity. I mean, we've got Florida on the sidelines, Ole Miss on the sidelines, uh, you, you know, tennis, I mean, you can go down the list of all the colleges that were there. And they're not just there to see our kids. Of course, they're to see Jameer, but they're there to see the other. So let's take that story and make that relevant. Go back two years ago, Jameer. We play Thursday night ESPN against Harrison. Yep. We play. And, of course, what happens? Kirby flies the helicopter in, which is the trick everybody's doing. Parts at the baseball field, yada, yada, yada. He comes out on the field, eats his popcorn and all that stuff. Now, here's the thing about it. What does Jameer do? He runs for 223 yards that night as a sophomore, weighing about 155 pounds. They do it on, we, we did it on power and we did it on inside zone. Right. It wasn't a bunch of trick plays. Mm -hmm. The next morning by 10 o'clock, I'd receive 35 text messages or emails wanting to know who number one was. That's why it's important. It's important where you're playing. It's important how you play when you're able to be seen. Right. And the biggest thing is you've got to take care of all the opportunities. And those opportunities, to speak to your point earlier, they're students that will gain access to a college not just because of their, what they can do athletically, but what they can do academically. Because right. if a university can give them an academic scholarship, <clears throat> now they don't have to tie athletic money up, and they can go use athletic money on another that's kid that's maybe marginal. in those lower, those, oh, in those it's huge. smaller classifications, it's definitely important. And the timing of things, I think it's important for people to understand. The Power Five guys, that's over in December. Oh, yeah. They're going to sign there and be gone. But everything else flows, and, and some of the – Division two, II, Division three, NAIA stuff. That's what April, May. Yeah. It happens. Oh, late. we've signed them as ladies in yeah. the summer. Right. I mean, Floyd Coffey signed three days, three days before they were to report. And right. my wife, I remember she took him to EKU on July the twenty. I mean, on July the twenty seventh to sign his scholarship because he enrolled on August the first. It was that late in the process. So yeah, what they do is, and that's why. And you can we could have this conversation now. Is the early signing date good or bad? Truthfully, I think it's good. There's some conditions I'd like to see. I think if you sign a scholarship and, and are an intent to play and that coach that you signed in under gets fired, they ought to at least give you like a 10-day free look period right. where you can go back and talk because we see what happens when a, uh, you know, a guy right. gets signed under one regime and another regime comes in and the kid don't get to play. I and mean, that's happened to some of our kids here locally. But the bigger thing, and I think this is the thing that you got to look at, is just understanding the opportunities that are out there and understanding that those opportunities, they're, they're this and they're that. And when that college coach comes into our school, when he comes in our field house, when, that, when he says, tell me about Bill Mayo, the best thing that the coach can say is, here's his transcript. He's, 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 you know, he's going to pass his grades. Here, he's, gonna, he's got the test score. Now let's talk about him as a player. Right. When you can do that, that is unbelievable. When you can't do that, they look at you and they say, coach, appreciate you coming by. And man, I appreciate you letting me come by. 
Listen, I, when he gets qualified. You got any 2022 kids? That's right. They go, tell me about your 2022 <laughs> yeah. kids. That's right, 2021. And they go north, right. and there's 25 more kids between here and Knoxville that look just like them. Or they go south Atlanta, and there's 25 more kids that look just like them there. So, you know, that's the big thing. They're going to have the opportunity to get it right. done. But at the end of the day, they got to get those grades. We can't hammer that enough. And be sure, moms and dads, you know those grades because you can get in a hole those freshman and sophomore years that is hard to dig out of as juniors and seniors. So I really encourage you, mom and dads, you want your son to be a part of that recruiting process, spend as much time focused on their grades as you do going to personal trainers and people like that. Absolutely. Before we wrap up, we'd be remiss not to mention your favorite week is homecoming. It's here. It couldn't get here soon enough. It's it is crazy. here. Why can so we not have two a year? Touch on that real quick. We need a sweetheart year, a homecoming year, a prom. I mean, prom week. Come on we now. We do them all. No, no, no. Listen, I, I love homecoming. In, yes. in all seriousness, I, it's one of the great moments to me in a school because the future gets to see the present and gets to see the past. And right. you kind of get them all at the same time. And I love how the, the alumni coming back. I want to invite alumni if y'all want to come. If you want to come out to practice, you're in town, man. Come out to practice. We love to have you. We there. always get a lot of them come down to visit the field oh, house yeah, and absolutely. see the facilities on Friday. Absolutely, of homecoming. Love Friday. to have them. Love it. But it's a busy week. And as right. Coach Chapel used to say uh, to the football team, you know, he said it to you, he said it to me, and I turn around and say it to our kids. Homecoming is not for you. That's right. The dance <laughs> is for you. Homecoming is not for you. We got a job to do. So, uh, but we've got a uh, the Monday is now moved to Coronation Day. So Coronation will happen uh, on Monday. They'll uh, you talk about who's going to be, you know, they'll announce the winner. And then it's a theme day every, every day, and it's great. They've got Area 51 Day. They've got Character Day. They've got awesome. Disney Day. It, it's really great. And then on Friday, we want to invite everybody out. Pep session at 11.05. It's a half day of school. Pep session from 11.05 to 12 o'clock. They cut them out, and, uh, um, and then it's, it's game time for us. So I'm excited. Be excited to get here this week. Absolutely. All right, we'll wrap up like we always do. Say we'll be back next week, same cat time, same cat channel. Go Big Red. <laughs>